Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to generate scripts to add a default constraint to column in multiple tables in SQL Server database. So think about a scenario where you have a database. Let's say we have Tech Brothers IT database. We have tables and there are tons of table. In my case, maybe I have 10 to 15 table. In your case, maybe you have hundreds of tables. So if we go to any table and take a look on the columns we have created by and created on so these are the two columns we have it somebody as a, a architect they, they design it we should have the values in these uh, columns so in the created on you should have the date when you insert the record and created by like who inserted the record so this gives us uh, some audit information uh, you can also have uh, updated on and updated by columns so these are called audit columns that people uh, add them to the table so they can see like who is uh, inserting the record or who, or who has updated the records so these columns are really help uh, now what we have done here uh, every time somebody has to uh, they insert the value they have to put their uh, let's say created on they have to use the get date function uh, let me show you so if you will say select uh, get date get date function it will return you the date time so you want to insert that information and uh, let's see sorry here and then uh, if uh, uh, you want to uh, in the created by you want to insert the user name so we can use uh, select s user name function this will return us uh, the user name uh, who is inserting the data in this table so if we we would like to create uh, these columns are present in all of those tables uh, at the time of design uh, they did not add the default constraint now they want to add the default constraint even the people will uh, insert the value in these columns or not uh, these values should be taken and inserted as part of uh, the row values uh, especially for these columns uh, they should be coming from a default and the rest of that value whatever the user will insert so that's fine but now when we think about uh, we have a scenario where we have hundreds of uh, tables and in each of the table we have to in, uh, create the default constraint for either one uh, created on or created by how you will generate those scripts uh, so that's the problem uh, we, we can't really type all those uh, so it will take forever now if you go to the techbrothersit.com I have uh, created these scripts already we are going to copy and understand and then use them so go to techbrothersit.com go to SQL Server T SQL tutorial and then go further down in chapter 6 so that's where we have uh, uh, default constraints and the number 6 uh, how to generate uh, scripts to add default constraints uh, to column in multiple tables in SQL Server so we have the script ready here I'm going to copy and then I show you how to use it so let's uh, open a new query paste it we are using our tech brothers IT database uh, and uh, here I'm declaring two variables uh, so why I'm declaring two variables uh, because uh, I don't want to make changes uh, here in the uh, in this script uh, I just want to make the change here and uh, the use the value of uh, these variables uh, and it will replace them so now I'm saying declare at the rate column name this is a variable so uh, we, that, that's how we declare a variable we start with the declare keyword and say at the rate and the variable name so it is at the rate column name then I'm saying okay this is wall card 128 so that's the uh, the maximum length we have provided for this variable we can save the strings and etc and then we are saying declare at the rate default value this is another variable that can also be worker 100 so we can save different uh, string values in that now I'm setting the values so I set uh, and say at the rate column name variable equal to created on so remember we have created on and created by columns and I want to generate the scripts for created on first and the value I want to have is a get date function so I put the value default value get data here I'm using this select query and you just uh, this is information I'm providing you saying okay schema name and get the schema uh, use the schema ID and convert to schema name and uh, tell me it is as a schema name t dot name okay give me the table name and uh, this is the alias we are using from sys dot tables so we have t dot name that means this name column is coming from sys dot tables so it's a good idea to use the alias uh, uh, especially uh, uh, when uh, you have the same name 
uh, name columns in different tables uh, so you don't have to provide the full uh, name of the table here instead of that you can distinguish them or separate them by using the alias uh, so that's uh, kind of make it neat and clean and c dot name so na this name column is coming from sys dot columns uh, so uh, this will give us uh, information about the schema table and column and now as uh, we have to create the, the uh, or generate the script uh, for the default uh, uh, constant we have to say alter table and then we have to provide the schema name and schema uh, table name and then we have to say add constraint and uh, then we have to say whatever the uh, I, I'm name using the naming convention uh, like df underscore schema name then I'm saying table name then I'm saying uh, column name and then I'm saying default and that's where I'm providing the value and uh, I'm saying four and uh, this is the column and uh, that's uh, as uh, uh, create default constraint query and uh, selecting from sys.tables and joining with sys.columns so I can use uh, the columns uh, coming from both tables uh, because I don't have a column name in uh, sys.tables uh, I have sys.tables uh, that return me t table names uh, but it does not return me columns uh, I need to get the columns uh, so I use sys.columns and join them on the object ID and I'm saying only take the objects uh, which are user created I don't care uh, about uh, the objects uh, or tables created by the Microsoft I don't need to use them so this is a part will be filtering that out and I'm saying uh, c dot name is equal to column name and return me only the column where name is equal to created on as we have uh, provided here and we are using this variable for filter now we have to run the entire thing together you can select from top to bottom or bottom to up uh, if you have multiple queries uh, if this is the only query you have in the window you don't have to select anything just execute uh, and you can see that from here so I have DBO table table 1 right here so you see column and created on this column is there and this is the column and I'm saying alter table dbo dot alt table one add constraint df underscore dbo underscore table one underscore created on default get date for created on so this is how I generated uh, these uh, scripts uh, so copy these scripts come to new window paste it there and once we run it uh, the default constraint will be created uh, on this column in each of that each of the table uh, if it is there so let's uh, we say if we say select uh, asterisk from sys dot uh, let's uh, say default constraints so if I run now let me take a look what we have we have uh, two default constraints uh, if I will create all these constraints this query should return us more information or more records uh, let's run that one completed successfully now select uh, and you see that all these default constraints are created uh, that's awesome this was quick you can see the values is the get date this is really great I like that part now I'm gonna go ahead and create the scripts for our created by so instead of created on here we will change to recreate by that's the column name on which we would like to create the default constraint and the value we want is the let's say we are going to use s user I'm gonna copy this part from here so this is a function we would like to use for the values right here and now we can go ahead and generate the scripts scripts are generated copy these scripts and then come to the new window just delete this part paste it control V let's just run the queries and now if we run this uh, you can see that uh, we have a default constraint created on this column as well so that's awesome I like that now I am going to test few things uh, see here DBO customer if I will select the data it does not have any data and you see that we have created a default constraint on created on and created by if I'm insert the value in the first name only let's say I'm going to say insert into into this also I'm going to paste it here just to see the query later and uh, here I will say f first name only that's uh, where I'm only inserting the value and uh, this value can be my name Amir now as default constraint uh, you should we should have the values come in for created on and created by 
by using the get date and s user underscore name functions we have created a constraint on these so there should be values these columns can be null because we there, there is no constraint created on these columns so let me run this one okay binary data will be truncated so let's see what exactly that means okay we have Uh, we have here date time and then uh, we have uh, uh, the binary data let's see which uh, column it is talking about see this is confusing um, tech brothers first name watcher and uh, now let's take a look on the de definition and other things maybe there is something missing so I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the tables create script as created on new query and uh, that will give me some information I'm trying to debug so we see that the s user created by so this may be a problem maybe my username is not fitting into the uh, worker 40 that could be the issue so let me see it, it did not throw error at that time when we were creating it so we thought okay we are fine let me alter this one alter table dbo paste paste the table and say alter column and i'm going to say created by and watch our 760 so we are just uh, increasing uh, the data type length uh, for this uh, created by column so from uh, watch are 40 i'm changing to 60 that will accept 60 characters so good now if we run the query what happened one row affected so that's one of the glitch we found like okay even uh, if you will provide the value uh, that does not fit uh, and that as a in the column uh, and you have provided that value as a default uh, sql server is not going to throw error till uh, you will not uh, insert the first row and it will try to insert that value so by definition it is not actually checking and th that's absolutely okay because uh, created by maybe there could be small name or uh, this uh, let's say in my case uh, when I run this uh, uh, let me show you when I run this uh, function uh, select s user name sorry Maybe in my case it is above 40 characters, but most of the people they will have very small uh, name or the so there is no really need to validate because you could have maybe uh, hundreds of users and uh, they could have uh, you don't want to check uh, uh, at the time of uh, creating the default, but at the time of inserting yes, uh, you need to insert that value. So that one one thing we learn it okay this could be error sometime if the value does not fit in that. Uh, column as a default now if I will uh, use the select query and see remember we have created the default constraint on created on and created by it was able to take that values and put into this as a default even we did not provide the value we were only inserting Amir that's a first name and other columns as uh, they can accept null so uh, they took the null value and uh, first name has the first name value and the rest of that those uh, are uh, populated created on and created by populated by the default constraint so uh, I hope uh, you learn something good out of this uh, script how to use it how to join the tables and uh, how to uh, generate uh, the draw uh, uh, add constraint uh, um, uh, scripts uh, by using the system table so thanks very much uh, and I will see you guys in the next video